entire talk is dedicated to Paul. I, and he's a lovely man. Those of you who have known him, uh, I, don't, I have not found a more gentle person than a Nobel laureate who is such a gentleman. So I'm going to dedicate this talk to him. The, the, the idea of this talk or the concept actually came from him. Uh, the other thing that is interesting about this is the word air quality. Um, a couple of years ago, I think it's about two years ago, the Supreme Court of the United States decided to broaden the definition of air quality. A lot of people think of the air quality is the air that we breathe. But the definition now that we are carrying is that, the, that anything in the air that can have effect, either direct or indirect effect on the human health, can be also part of the air quality, like CO2 is a good example of that. So CO2, as you know, most of you know, is, is, it doesn't, it's pretty benign gas. You, know, you can breathe, breathe it and it doesn't have any negative consequences on human health, but because it's a greenhouse gas, uh, you can now call that as a, <coughs> as a, as a pollutant in the atmosphere. Um, this is, has been a 40-year observation of multiple satellites from NASA, uh, this weather service from uh, NOAA, and of course, uh, uh, John's instrument, uh, Bohm, Skemaki, and, and others. So this is a long-term program, uh, but this was influenced a lot, at least in the U.S., by this amendment to the Clean Air Act in 1977, where the U.S. Congress gave NASA the responsibility. It is, it is the only... Uh, I think NASA had that is written in the law of the U.S. Congress saying that you will measure ozone. 